Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and today it's my pleasure to welcome into studio Rosanna Perez Barcinas, a Paul Jacolet fan and the driving force behind a new exhibit that has just opened at T Galleria, as well as Scott Russell, historian and executive director of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Rosanna Scott, welcome to the show. Half a day, Kathy. Nice to see you again. When was the last time I was on your show? What year is that? Oh, I think that was last year, maybe, or the year before. 2014, Welcome I back think. to Saipan. Thank you. I'm a repeat offender. I love Saipan. <laughs> and we love to have you. And we're very excited about the exhibit that is now ongoing at Tea Gallery. It's kind of a follow-up to what we did in April. But tell us, what first interests you in Paul Jacolet, and how did this all get started? Well, Paul Jacolet, if anybody looks at a single image, is just going to be assaulted by its beauty, the detail, the color. I love, I love his artistry. So I've, I've been aware of his images. I know that he moved through Micronesia, um, but I didn't get to know him intimately until 2007 when our local Jacolet expert, um, Dr. Don Rubenstein, who's an art historian at the University of Guam, um, had been already working with Jacques adopted daughter um, to put on this exhibit. And it was uh, called um, Paul Jacques Vision of Micronesia. While he was already curating that and doing research, he, because of his relationship with, with Jacques daughter, which was decades long because he's had a fascination with Jacques for for a long time, the daughter trusted him so much that he gave him, she gave him carte blanche to the collection that she inherited from her dad. Mm. And so because of that, Don had access to his original notes. And in that research, he found the names of the Rainbow Series. Actually, they're called um, the Women of the South Seas, but they're commonly known as the Rainbow Series Women because of their colors. The woman in red, the woman in orange, Um, Every color of the rainbow, for as long as anybody has been a Jacolet collector, the most sought after prints have been the Rainbow Series women. At this 2007 exhibit, I am reading their names for the first time in an art exhibit on Guam. And I'm looking at, wait, this woman was Conception Guerrero, the woman in red, This painting was done in 1934. I'm like, my mom was born in 1932. This could be my grandma. This is somebody's grandma in Saipan. And I was just like, why aren't we telling the people in Saipan that their moms were the subject of the most sought after collection that Paul Jacolet has had in his career as an artist? And I wanted to celebrate these women with their families in Saipan. And so ever since 2007, I approached Don and I said, Don, let's share them with with their families in Saipan. And I told him I'm gonna do what I can to get this exhibit going. So it's been a almost 10 years long dream of mine and I took advantage of, of FESPAC coming to Guam. And I wrote for federal dollars to put on this exhibit And ideally, it would have been a month long here in Saipan first. I had always wanted to introduce them to Saipan community first. So it was going to be in April and then the whole month of May in Guam. And I was encouraging um, duty-free. At the time, they were were like, yes, we want to do it. You can have our venue. And that's all they were going to provide because we didn't have a museum or any space to have an exhibit, art exhibit, like of the magnitude that we wanted. So Duty Free Guam bought into our, our project and they were going to provide a venue. And that didn't, ha- that didn't pan out. Um, but I did get initial grant funding from the Council of Arts and Humanities and the Guam Visitors Bureau 
as well as a private collector of Jacques and a friend of mine, um, Peter Gill, and his wife, Dr. Joan Gill. Um, I got this initial funding to um, do the research, the writing, um, and also curate an exhibit um, that I eventually wanted to do on Saipan. Um, because that didn't happen, um, we approached Jamaica, who asked the Saipan Duty Free to pull this project together. And in a very short time, Jamaica did it. And um, so did the community of um, Duty Free and the Council of, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Scott. Northern Marianas Humanities. NMI Humanities Council. Scott, tell us a little bit more about this man, Paul Jacolet. How did he get to the Micronesia? How did he end up in Micronesia? And when did this happen where he actually captured these images? Well, Kathy, I mean, uh, Catherine, I'm not an expert on uh, Jacolet, but as I understand it, he uh, went to Japan as a, as a child with his parents. His father had some position in Japan. Um, and he ended up, I think, growing up in Japan and... Uh, being educated in Japan, and during the course of his education, he became involved with uh, with artwork, drawing and painting, uh, and he took it a step further by becoming involved with a Japanese-style woodblock print. It's a very elaborate process where they where they make these traditional Japanese prints using this uh, woodblock process. Uh, but Jacques Houlet, uh added his own twist to it. Uh, and did things that the Japanese uh, did not do in their artwork, like making direct eye contact and using colors that were much, much more bright than what the Japanese were using. And so a lot of the Japanese purists did not like his work at all. They no, they was, hated him, actually. They thought it was a violation of this very rigid uh, Japanese art form. He was in Tokyo, and he describes what is, he's quoted, there was a torrential downpour, like a tropical deluge. And a gentleman with a huge umbrella called out to him and said, Moshi, with his hand motioning, so he could take comfort under his umbrella. This gentleman who was holding the umbrella was obviously not Japanese. And so when he asked, you know, where you were from, he found out that this gentleman was half Chukis, half French. His father was Nederek, I believe, um, who got off of his ship in Pompeii, and, I mean in, in Chukin, and, and stayed there. Married, had kids, and now his son was in Tokyo. And so just this happen chance, nice boy from Chuk brought him in under his umbrella. Um, a couple months later, he was in Chuk um, and started befriending this family so he first his first introduction to Micronesia was through this happen chance occurrence and then because of our colonial powers in Japan owned Saipan and several of these Micronesian islands that he visited he came through Saipan to get to all the islands several of his trips through Micronesia began in Saipan and because Jacolé um, was first introduced to Saipan and the other islands via um, Congressman Kalili's, your sitting congressman's grandfather, and, the, and his namesake, Gregorio Sablan, um, was his host here in Saipan. You even hear, you, you hear Jacques in his um, interviews, and he, he's even quoted in some magazines, um, where he talks about his beach house in Garapan. That's not his beach house. It was this, the Kalili family's beach house located around where Tony Stern's office is, right? Dr. Tony Stern, another Jacolet fan. But everybody who's been at Mariana's clinic can see Jacolet's prints throughout. And his colors were just assaulting. They're so beautiful. They really, like, jump out at you. I, I love his style. So tell us what people can expect when they go to this exhibit at T Galleria. What do you think? What did you think when you walked through? I was, I, I was. I mean, physically, like, what is there? It is. And it, where is it located at the store? Okay, when you're walking out of the um, duty free Galleria, there's a corridor um, before you enter the casino. In that corridor is an installation that they built. There's a white box. Now, was that like 20 feet tall? 
completely white. On one side, it says the event name, Paul Jacqueline Micronesia. As you walk inside in this all white, stark white, white matted, white framed prints of his, you walk in and the colors are assaulting you. It's like just all the images are just so beautiful. And I think anybody who walks through there, I, you know, would, would get that feeling like, you know, these, the ethnographic, the implications for ethnographic history also, like I find, I mean, it's just fascinating. Like those were actual, you know, those are the, our shells that he had. Those are our native plants and flowers. And there's symbolism to everything he used. He, it's, there's a lot of research that can be spurred from from his artwork. So, um, Scott, well, how did the, the council become involved in the project? And why did you feel it was important to help Rosanna bring this to the Marianas? Well, Rosanna, you know, brought the, the concept to us and and we discussed it with the board and our board was very uh, supportive of it. Um, and we thought it was, uh, you know, an excellent opportunity for another type of humanities programming for the public, particularly uh, with respect to, you know, having uh, people from the islands here with surviving, you know, relatives, uh, you know, that we could tie that back into the local community. All right. Well, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about your personal thoughts on uh, the exhibit, as well as some of the outcomes from the uh, presentation that was made in April here with Dr. Don Rubenstein. And we'll be back with more after this break. Papa Day, this is Eulalia Villagomez of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Did you know that you can donate up to $5,000 to the Humanities Council through the CNMI Education Tax Credit Program? Donations from individuals and corporations qualify and can be used to offset your local wage and salary tax, BGRT, and earnings tax. Call our office at 235-4785 to see how you can support humanities programs in our community and obtain a tax credit for your donation. Thank you and Cesus Mossy. We're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council and we are now accepting nominations for the 2016 Governor's Humanities Awards. Would you like to nominate someone who has made an outstanding contribution to the humanities? The categories are Research and Publication in the Humanities, Preservation of Traditional Cultural Practices, Preservation of CNMI History, Lifetime Achievement in the Humanities, or Outstanding Humanities Teacher Inside or Outside the Classroom. Nomination forms are available at northernmarianashumanities.org or at our office at Springs Plaza in Gualarai. The deadline to submit is 4.30 p.m. on Friday, October 14, 2016. Do you have a project idea related to the humanities? The Northern Marianas Humanities Council awards competitive matching grants to community organizations, individuals, and ad hoc groups to support humanities projects. We welcome project applications that support the goals and objectives of our strategic master plan. For more information or an application, visit our website at northernmarianashumanities.org. That's northernmarianashumanities.org or stop on by our office at Springs Plaza in Gualarai. Our next quarterly deadline is at 4 p.m. on September 30. Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We're speaking today with Rosanna <laughs> Perez Barcinas, a Paul Jacolet fan and the driving force behind a new exhibit of his work at T Galleria, and also Scott Russell, historian and executive director of the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Rosanna, I think people who haven't yet heard are asking, well, who are these ladies in the Rainbow Series? So let's go ahead and share that information again for those who have not yet heard or maybe missed the April presentation. And let's also share where people can get in touch with you if they're interested in dialoguing with you about these ladies. So tell us this part of the story. Yes, again, in 2007, and at an exhibit on Guam, did we read for the first time that the woman in orange is Conception Guerrero. Um, Miss Guerrero is related to Familian Pond family. She is a great aunt of um, Herman Guerrero. So um, Rosalia Callisto is the woman in orange. Juanita Antelon is the woman in yellow. The woman in green is C Caterina Tadella. Dolores Amparo is the woman in blue. Mariana Diaz is the woman in violet. 
I'm sorry, Indigo, and Carmen Blanco is a violet woman. And if you have any of these names and you know anybody who has these last names, please contact them and let them know to p- get in touch with the NMI Humanities Council and friend them on a um, Facebook page that they're, ma- they're managing, monitoring, um, and it is the Paul Jacolet in Micronesia. And by the way, are, there, are these pictures available on the Facebook page? There are images of banners that we had made of them. We have seven foot tall banners of each of the ladies with their names, identifying each of them. Um, based on what you guys have heard, what do you think it means to the families of these people to have this presentation earlier this year and now the exhibit and, and this booklet that you're holding, Rosanna? What, what do you think it means to them or have you actually heard from them? had conversations with any family members of these ladies? I, some of the families that I've heard of, it's evoking a lot of discussion on family histories. So I, I love that. Um, we, I haven't gotten a direct descendant who said, that is my great grandma. Um, and again, we're asking everybody to friend the Humanities Council's Facebook page, Paul Jacolet in Micronesia. And let us know if you are a direct descendant because we would like to talk to you. And if there are any stories about these women, we want to hear it. Like, do you, does your family even know that your mom was a subject of such beauty that is so, <laughs> like, desired? It's like collector, collectors around the world have your grandma's face on their wall. I, I, I just want to know. That's if pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And did you, does your family know that? I... I, all these women are so beautiful. I mean, you see their 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 dress, their mestizas, the joy that they have. Like, it it it's a that's the era of Chamorros at the time in Saipan before we were spoiled by war, World War Two, and the the colonial powers that owned us. And I just I I love that he captured our people that time before. I, it's it's beautiful. I, I want to ask you both individually, is there any particular piece of his work that might be your favorite or really stands out to you for a particular reason? Rosanna, you've got the book and you're perusing it, so I'll let <laughs> you um, choose first. I would have to say, um, for myself, I believe it is the young man, Basilio Ogarto, who Who's I'm here? pretty Related? sure is my, yes, yeah, who I'm pretty sure is my uh, grandmother's brother. I hope I'm not getting my gene- genealogy wrong, but when I first saw that, I was like, no way. Uh, so so that one really strikes me. And it was so interesting to hear from Dr. Rubenstein all the symbolism that goes into the pictures. Yes. Um, but anyways, you go ahead. Which one so, stands so out to you? So with you and your family, like what discussions have you had with them? Like is, that, is the relative on your mom's side, your dad's side? What did they say they knew about him? We didn't... I, I only... Um, shared the f- photo I don't I can't remember now if my mother shared this booklet with me or I shared it with my mother I may have shared it with my mom but it was just a real um, brief discussion not much detail between between the two of us not a lot of um, discussion on how it could have happened or anything like that but yeah. it was just I mean it's number one a beautiful f- um, watercolor or, or print and so yeah that one speaks to me how about you I it's so it's so hard to pinpoint <laughs> one. It's like but, picking a favorite child. <laughs> yes, but I can speak of a child of mine. I actually I actually have a Jacolet print, an original, but the subject is a Japanese, and it's it's titled Ibisu. Okay. And it's the goddess of good luck. Okay. And this image is a, of a geisha, like she's about to pull a pin out of her hair, and she's holding a giant fish. So you don't know what she's going to do with the fish. But I love the detail in this print. And um, the, the eye of the fish that she's holding has a, a green patina that he used um, some sort of green oyster wow. to get that color. Wow. Yeah, it's the detail in this one print that makes it my favorite. Just knowing the, how difficult the process is. And yeah, it's really beautiful. 
Oh, well, but it's, I, I it's not in this one. I would, yeah, I was going to say, I wish I could have seen that. Go one. online and look I for Ibisu. I actually didn't realize how vast his his collection of work was. So it's interesting for you to you, open this door to us. It, it's not just it's not just watercolors. It's not just Japanese block print. He also designed kimonos. Wow. So like like Scott said, he wasn't popular with the Japanese. He was very popular with foreigners. And because he was selling to foreigners, he sold them in American dollars. Mm-hmm. So he was super wealthy. I mean, Japan at the time, I think a yen, yen, one yen was one dollar, you know, so he was Mm -hmm. really raking it in outside of Japan, but within Japan, they loved his kimonos. He also, the thing I love about Jacques Allais is he really like, he was a, he broke tradition. One thing, um, as an artist and his, the details, I love that he was dedicated to this centuries, I mean, um, decades long family of paper makers and he only used this paper from this family for all of his prints. If you hold him up to the air, I mean to the sun, you will see JP watermarked in oh, the paper. Okay. It's yeah, his detail is incredible. Mm. But um yeah, I know I could talk about Jacques Lee forever. Scott, you kinda you can't decide they're all so great, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to to pick out a favorite. Um I don't know all the images that well, but, uh, you know, they're all striking. They are. Oh, there's none. With, oh, maybe you would like the one with fish in it because you're oh, a yeah, fisherman. Oh, yeah, fisherman. we got to find one with and a, a fish there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about what's coming I'll up will that next. To you. Not only are people available to go see the exhibit. Until October 15th. Only until October 15th at Tea Galleria. So please make time to go down, especially if you feel there might be a family member among the collection. But... Um, there's also something related to the upcoming um, anniversary of the Humanities Council, Scott. Can you give us a little detail on that? Uh, yes, Catherine. Uh, we're having our 25th anniversary on the evening of October 28th, which is a Friday. It'll be at the Pacific Islands Club um, starting at uh, 6 p.m. I believe it runs until uh, 10. Uh, we'll be having a great uh, a series of, of uh, activities during the uh, during the gala dinner. Uh, we will have uh, a keynote by uh, Kathy Jetnell Kitchener, uh, the Marshallese poet and um, environmental activist. Uh, we'll be having a musical tribute to uh, the late uh, Dave Peter, and uh, we'll also be having a uh, silent auction of uh, works of art and cultural items. And we're hoping to be able to offer the uh, images, the framed images of Jacques Goulet that are now on exhibit, we're hoping to offer those um, at the uh, at the silent auction. Due to the generous generosity of Guam, I mean of Saipan Duty Free, because um, the booklet that originally was designed and printed by Guam dollars, the second printing, um, really minor revisions, giving credit to. Um, Duty Free Galleria now for the reprinting of these booklets um, and in dedication to the 25 years that the humanities has been working um, for your community. So um, Duty Free also paid because it was beyond the granting for actual product. They paid for the printing of high resolution photos, the matting, the framing, that installation. We had an excellent opening. It was uh, well attended by descendants and it was a, a really beautiful event so we need to thank, thank um, Duty Free for acknowledging the contribution to the Humanities Council and, and being good stewards and partners of, of the community they live in. Now you also have, as I understand, have put a lot of your personal money into making all of this possible but is there anybody else that you would like to thank um, for the presentation made in April and the exhibit coming up now and hopefully what will happen with the council's anniversary. Um, one person I would like to um, acknowledge is Maya Alonzo. Maya Untalan Alonzo is a descendant of Juanita Untalan, the woman in yellow. Um, she is an excellent writer, editor. She's my friend. And in, after the 2007 exhibit, I went up, I approached Maya and I was like, are you related to these women? I am aware um, through history of the movement of Chamorros from Guam to Yap, and then from Yap to Saipan. These diases, 
these into lines, I, I just knew to, to approach to approach Maya. And from the very beginning, she's been part of this journey. And um, you will read, other than the factual information in the booklet that Duty Free is providing, um, that also will be distributed through the Humanities Council office. Um, this factual, romantic read of Jacques movement through our islands and um, with the intention of spurring further research. We want it to like circle um, rippling effects in Saipan. That's what we were hoping was going to happen from the unveiling of the, the, the signers. Well, I really hope that anybody who is not yet a Paul Jacolet fan based on all the exposure that he's been getting in recent years, will, will be one following our chat today. And we'll take time to go out to the exhibit at Tea Galleria no later than October 15th of this year. That's how long it will be there. But I wanted to offer you both an opportunity for, for final thoughts before we go. Scott? Uh, well, Kat, I'm just uh, happy that we had the opportunity to let the public know about the exhibit and the fine work uh, that we had in collaboration with uh, Duty Free and also from uh, Rosanna, all of her hard work and dedication to make this, this actually happen. Um, these are the kind of partnerships that the council likes to form, and they really help to amplify our work. Which wasn't hard at all, because I love learning about our history. And um, that my final thought is just thank you to the Saifan community for always welcoming, welcoming me every time I'm here. Continuing my love affair with uh, with our, our people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our guests today have been Rosanna Perez Barcinas and Scott Russell talking about the ongoing Paul Jacolet exhibit at T Galleria. Please make time to come out and see this exquisite artwork featuring uh, beautiful ladies of our islands. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Mm-hmm.